Hey, you're listening to Clumsy Theosis, a Catholic podcast that explores topics within the Catholic faith to help us deepen our spiritual lives, own our relationship with the Lord, and strengthen His church. Hello and welcome to the Clumsy Theosis podcast. My name is Rochelle Lucero and I'm the host of the show. Today we're talking about Catherine of Siena and I could not be more excited. I know I sound congested. It's just that early morning congestion. I'm not sick or anything, so no need to worry. So let's just jump in and talk about Catherine of Siena because she's fabulous. She's one of my favorite saints, and her feast day is actually next week, April 29th. Catherine of Siena is amazing for so many reasons, and I think one of the fabulous things about her is that her life and her spiritual mystical experiences are always relevant. And I guess you could probably say that about all of the saints, you know, there is something timeless about holiness. So we're going to talk about just a sliver of what St. Catherine of Siena can offer us because we only have 15-ish minutes together. So let's just sit back and let ourselves profit from some of her wisdom for today's episode and let's just let it wash over us and affect our day and the rest of our week. So the most common quote attributed to St. Catherine of Siena is, if you are who you were created to be, you will set the world on fire. Now, maybe she said this, maybe not. I don't really care. (laughs) I've read so many of her letters and her writings. I've never come across this, but it doesn't matter to me if she actually said it or not, because it sounds like Catherine. You know, some of the language that sh- that is used in this quote is Catherine language. Her saying, setting the world on fire, I could totally see her saying that fire is very big in her expression of her mystical experiences. And the overall message of this quote is so Catherine also, the message that everyone is called to theosis and we're called to live this life of theosis down very different, unique paths. Though Catherine would not have said theosis, that wouldn't have been a word she would use. She would probably have said something along the lines of becoming one with Christ, or something similar to that. But that's the overall message of this quote. Just me explaining all of that, you can probably tell why it's obvious that I love her so much. In fact, a little, um, a little known uh, piece of trivia is that the Clumsy Theosis slogan, Transform the World, it was inspired from this quote. So Catherine of Siena and the Blessed Mother are the patronesses of the Clumsy Theosis ministry. That word patroness just reminded me about Patreon and that we have new Patreon members that I need to thank today. If you're not aware, Clumsy Theosis just transitioned over to be able to receive donations via Patreon, and that's just a donation platform which allows us to receive donations monthly, but more importantly, it allows us to send the donors, it allows us to send you special perks and benefits for your donations depending on what you're donating. And there's a lot more information about that if you were to visit clumsytheosis.net and clicking the word donate in the menu. Head over there and see all the benefits that you could potentially receive if you decide to become a patron. But back to those people that I need to thank. We have eight new members already, and so please join me in thanking Alexandria, Belsky, Frank, Juan, Louis, Peggy, Richard, and Roland. This show is only possible because of the donations of listeners like yourself. So if you'd like to help this ministry grow, please prayerfully consider donating and you can go to clumsytheosis.net, click the word donate in the menu. And also, also everyone who has donated in the past, but I just want to thank you for supporting Clumsy Theosis in our rinky dink days. So I've sent you an email to request your mailing address so I can send you a little something. So head to your email inbox, make sure that you have my email and respond with your address so I can send you just a little, a little something. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm glad that I remembered. Back to Catherine of Siena. She's actually one of the four. There's only four women doctors in the church, and she is one of them. Catherine of Siena is also what we would refer to as a mystic. If you want to learn more about mysticism, let me know. Reach out to me on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, and let me know that that's a topic you're interested in. I would love to record that show for you. 
Now, Catherine was born in 1347 in Italy, and she died at the young age of 33. But even though she died so young, she was able to accomplish so much in her short life. I mean, she received her first mystical vision from the Lord when she was six years old. And then by the time she had turned 13, she became a Dominican tertiary. And that's when she started to learn how to read. She wasn't educated. And that's huge to remember when we think about her being a doctor of the church. The theology that she's put forward is just so profound. But she received all of it from the Lord, not from this formal education that she got. And she learned so much from the Lord that as a very young lady, between like the ages of 17 and 20, we start to see her gathering followers. Like people just wanted to follow her and listen to her and be taught by her. So she started um, leading this group of people, people who were older than her even. But another fascinating thing about Catherine is that she got involved in papal politics. She traveled to Avignon, France, because there was a papal palace there, and it was like this new, opulent, like over-the-top palace. And she went there to get the Pope and persuade him to return back to Rome, where he belonged. And on multiple occasions, she wrote to the Pope, telling him in very direct language to kind of man up and to act right and to do his job. But the thing, the beautiful thing is that she didn't do this disrespectfully. She had immense respect for the Pope and his office. And when you read the language of her letters, there's some way that she was able to be so direct and so frank and even demanding of the Pope, but still be so loving and respectful for the leader of God's church. Another thing that she did, she wrote what we refer to as the dialogue. That is the title of her masterpiece, if you were. It is a dialogue between Jesus and her soul. It's beautiful, it's profound, and Jesus told her to write it. And throughout all of this, she was having the most fantastic prayer experiences in which she would be meeting with Jesus and Mary and the other saints. I mean, so much happened in her prayer. I mean, I could just go on and on about that. But I mean, just a few that stick out right now, like she had a mystical marriage to Christ during one of her prayer experiences in which the Blessed Mother was there as like a witness and she approved of the match. And then Catherine also suffered a mystical death. I mean, talk about intense. And then later on in her life, she received the stigmata, but it was an invisible stigmata. So so if you ever see images of St. Catherine of Siena, she'll usually have a stigmata in her palms, but it's invisible to the world. But she had it and she felt the excruciating pain of it. And a whole host of other things happened in her prayer life. I, I mean, you could just go on and on. And actually, in fact, people have, they have written all of these books talking about all of her mystical prayer experiences. And you know, the the thing that gets me most about St. Catherine of Siena is that she lived such a fantastic life out in the world affecting change, but that is not the type of life that she wanted. She did not want to be what we would refer to today as like an active religious and like a hyperactive religious, you know, like the way that Mother of Teresa was. That was kind of like the way Catherine was, but that's not what she set out to do. That's not what she wanted. She didn't want to be out in the world. Instead, her heart's desire was to be like a cloistered contemplative nun. She would have preferred to stay indoors and distanced herself from the world and its distractions so that she could be united with God in prayer constantly and constantly interceding for the church and the world through prayer services that she would do night and day and going to mass and fasting and doing penance for the sake of the church and the world. That's what she wanted to do. And so there is such a stark difference between what she wanted to do and how she wanted to live out her life and what actually happened. And so you have to stop and think, what what happened? Like, why is there such a disconnect? And this is where I think we can learn a lot from St. Catherine of Siena. I mean, we can't learn how to be a mystic per se from her, or can we learn how to be a doctor of the church? But we can learn from her example. We can learn how to listen to the will of God for our lives And I mean like constantly listening to him so we can heed new directions from the Lord when and if he presents them to us. And also abandonment of self to the Lord. That's huge. I mean, it's a total and it's a complete trust that God will lead us down the path of holiness he has created specifically and uniquely for us. 
And Catherine learned that. She learned all of that from the Lord. Through all of that time growing in friendship with him in prayer, she learned that she could depend on him and whatever he called her to was the right thing for her. And you know, she almost got that life that she had desired to live. Because when she was really young, her family had arranged a marriage for her, but she knew that she was supposed to marry Jesus. And when she told her family they totally did not honor that lifestyle that she had put forward, they were going to go ahead with the match. And so her pro- in protest, she cut off all of her hair so that she would not be presentable. And so that would, that would stop the marriage from going forward. And it did. And, but her mother was furious, I'm sure, as you can imagine. And as a punishment, she had to stay in the house and serve her family until her hair grew back and she started to look normal again. So this went on for a very long time. And you know what? She didn't mind staying indoors. She didn't mind serving her family per se, but what she didn't like doing, she didn't like how the chores were interruptions to her prayer. (laughs) She didn't mind doing the work. She just didn't like that it interrupted the time that she wanted to use praying. And so in order for her to get over that, she imagined when she was serving and cleaning up after her own family, and it it was a huge family, She imagined that she was doing all of that for the Holy Family. And I think we can all take a leaf out of her book, especially right now, if we are quarantined with our families and things are starting to get a little mundane or we're starting to get restless or it's starting to become difficult being in such close quarters all the time. Just imagine our families as the Holy Family, as Mary, Joseph, Jesus, and maybe even some of the saints. But during that time in her life, when she got to live out that like cloistered lifestyle, she got so close to the Lord because she was spending more and more time in prayer with him. And I mean like intense prayer, like intense fasting and mortifications. I think she even like slept on a board, like she put a board in her mattress so that she would not have a comfortable sleep. But that's just how Catherine was. She was intense. Her passionate Italian blood was obvious in the way that she lived out her life, no matter what she was called to at that time. And I love her for that. You know, and she loved that way of living, right? That's what she wanted to do. But the Lord had other ventures for her. So those few years that she spent in that cloistered, that self-cloistered environment, growing in communion with God, or should I say in union with God, that was very formative for her. Because of it, she learned how to abandon herself to the divine will of God. So when he called her out of that, she was able to abandon her desires because they were no longer her desires. She had united her desire with the Lord's desire. And now whatever he wanted for her is what she wanted for herself. And she also learned to trust that God's will was perfect. It was perfect for her. She didn't know what she would become or what she would even do. All she knew is that it was the Lord's will, and so she went with it. And this is where we can learn so much from Catherine. You know, that abandonment of self to the divine will of God. You know, how often are we able to stop and recognize that God is calling us to something different? You know, we need to get in the practice of stopping and asking ourselves, Am I holding on to my own will here, or am I being attentive to the divine will of God? You know, or maybe even more important, what type of situations trigger this behavior within us where we decide to call our own shots or just to become the ones in charge of our own lives? I know for me, that typically happens when it comes to the goals that I've set for myself. I'm a big goal setter, and not only do I set goals, I set benchmarks. If I'm not hitting my benchmarks in the same amount of time that I expected I would, or things are just looking a little different than how I imagined they would, I'm like, oh no, okay, something is wrong and I have to intervene and I have to work harder, maybe just white knuckle it and push through to get things back onto the track that I envisioned they would be on. And I mean, and this has happened in all kinds of areas in my life, you know, in friendships, romantic relationships schooling, different career paths, and even like life timelines. You know, those ones where you say at this age, I'm going to be in this stage of my career and I'm going to have these type of personal accomplishments and these material possessions and whatnot. You know, those are the times when you need to stop and be like, wait a second, that's my plan, but what's the Lord's plan? And Catherine taught me the importance of that. You know, she taught me how to just let go 
and let Jesus take the will and abandon myself to the divine will of God. You know, and I think what really hit me and drove that home for me, I remember one day sitting and thinking, wow, God did all of that through Catherine just because Catherine said yes. She said yes to him over and over and over. Her life is such a beautiful example of theosis. And God had only designated her journey of theosis to be able to be played out in that unique, unrepeatable way. Like no one else would have been able to live the life that she lived that was designated for her. And I thought, you know what? What if she had said no? I feel more comfortable in this self cloistered lifestyle that I've been living for these last couple years. I'm not going to step out of this and go into the world, Lord. It is a holy thing to do. And that's what I'm doing. Like, what if she had told the Lord no? How sad would that have been for the world? And how much would the world be lacking if she would have just said no? You know, when we look at all the wonderful, magnificent things that she's brought to the church and to the world, and she was only able to do that because she was attentive to the divine will of God and she had abandoned herself to it. And then I thought, you know, what if that happened to me and to the rest of the world? Like, what would the world be lacking if we did not let the Lord conquer our hearts and conquer our lives and if we didn't live, let him live radically through us? And then when it comes to like living a radical life, let me say this, the most poetic thing about living radically for the Lord is that it could look like Catherine of Siena's life, like going out there and being active in the world the way that she was, or living a radical life with Jesus could actually be living a life that is unseen by the world, and yet it would be just as brilliant and radical. You know, how poetic is that? And Catherine saw that, Catherine knew that, and she loved it. And so I'm going to end today's episode with an excerpt from one of her prayers. Her prayers are typically super long, (laughs) so I'm just going to read out a little piece for you to ponder on for the day and for the week. And this prayer is titled, You Are Direct Without Any Twisting. You guide your servant in different ways along different paths. We should judge all things according to your will, and most of all, where your servants are concerned, who are united with your will and transformed by it. This is why the soul is happy when in your light she sees the light of the endlessly different ways and paths she sees in all of these servants of yours. For though they travel by different ways, they are all running along the fiery road of your charity. Catherine found so much joy in the reality that all of us are called down different roads of holiness and how important it is that we are all different and that we answer those calls to be so different from each other because with all of our differences, we're able to accomplish so much more for the kingdom of heaven here on earth and for all of eternity. Just by the small amounts of information that I've shared today, you can tell that she has influenced my spirituality just a bit. And this prayer, like I said, is longer. And also, if you just want this shorter version, I'm gonna post all of that down in the show notes. There's gonna be a link for you. There's also going to be some other goodies down in the show notes. There's going to be a link to sign up to have the weekly episode emailed to you every week because it's a weekly email. Um, There's also going to be a link down there for Patreon. And I'd like to invite you to please consider prayerfully donating to Clumsy Theosis if you feel that this ministry has positively impacted your life. And lastly, down in the show notes, there are links to the Clumsy Theosis Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts so that you can join the community and the conversations. And you can also reach out to me at any time and let me know where you are in your spiritual life, how this episode is hitting you and all of that. And the very last thing I would like to ask you before we sign off today is if you like this episode, if you liked it, I'm sure you know other people that will like it. So I'm going to ask you if you would please consider sharing this episode with your friends. All right, that concludes our episode on St. Catherine of Siena. Please check her out if she's new to you. There's so much more that I did not cover today. I'm pretty confident that you're going to love her. You're in my prayers. Please stay safe. Please make smart decisions and entrust yourself to the divine will of God. Peace out. 
Thank you for tuning in to Clumsy Theosis. I'm so happy that you've been able to hang out. If you want to learn more about Clumsy Theosis, you are more than welcome to visit my website, clumsytheosis.net. From clumsytheosis.net, you will also be able to contact me if you're interested in booking me as a speaker or if you're just feeling generous and you'd like to make a donation. Remember that together we can transform the world by letting the Lord transform us.